take this question what is ethno nationalism examine the critical factors responsible for tribal discontent in india what is ethno nationalism examine the factors responsible for tribal discontent in india I'll give the definition later. Ethno nationalism refers to uh, seeking political community on the basis of ethnicity, forming political community. It can be a nation or a region, searching for autonomy. But what is important is that. on the basis of ethnicity for example indian nationalism is not on the basis of ethnicity indian nationalism is supposed to be for all for all religions for all castes and tribes such a thing is called civic nationalism so if nationalism is for all it is civic nationalism but if it is based on a particular ethnic criteria then it is ethno nationalism this is for hindus that would be ethno nationalism assam for assamese ethno nationalism bodo ethno nationalism mizo ethno nationalism so what is the basis of indian nationalism civic nationalism nation is supposed to be for all for all religions all tribes castes and we are supposed to go by the constitution constitution doesn't give any priority to any particular ethnic group so opposite of ethno nationalism is civic nationalism for all there would be some citizenship criteria and once he is a citizen there won't be any discrimination so all those fundamental rights reinforce civic nationalism freedom of religion okay protection of culture rights to minorities so our constitution is based on civic nationalism citizenship is based on civic nationalism there is no preference to any particular ethnicity but if somebody says that this is for hindus and muslims if they don't like they should go to pakistan what will that be called it is promoting hindu nationalism that's true but in this context what is that called ethno nationalism ethno nationalism so hindu nationalism is an example of ethno nationalism hindu nationalism is an example is an instance of ethno nationalism so tell me how many ethno nationalism cases we discussed so far and what are we going to discuss today we discussed one very important nationalism we discussed one important ethno nationalism nagaland exactly nagaland the centenary is also 
centenarians also can be no said. they don't have an idea of a nation no nation is a very advanced concept they just want to protect their territory nation is a modern concept you can't say they want to be they they have that sense of nationalism no nationalism is a recent concept so uh, greater nagaland or nagalem is a case of ethno nationalism okay so um why why do people uh, pursue this ethno nationalism is one and then he linked it to critical factors responsible for tribal discontent let me tell you i am taking from socio book but this can be our socio tribes part but this can be done in polity part also in politics part polity movement social change i am focusing on certain issues where you can use those issues at many places okay specific facts are not so important you may remember some facts but the issues are important so with ease you can you should give examples so tell me what are the critical factors so in this context so this is you can remember he linked it to tribe he is not linking it to hindu nationalism so you confine it to tribal issues rather than hindu nationalism okay but in the context of communalism and religion that is a different thing but here it is a link to tribes so so we have seen cases like this like this and somebody wants here okay somebody wants a separate nation okay uh so how does one go about a demand like this take the case of mizos first mizos is a successful case of resolution okay it is a con successful conflict resolution okay so tell me who will summarize mizos case supraja can you summarize mizos case Mm, please give the basic details and then identify the trend mm. uh uh bizos uh, they are actually uh, live in uh, my manipur okay tell me are mizos in ethnic community or a tribe ethnic community yes it is an ethnic community not a tribe ethnic community means many tribes put together okay next hmm. they live in myanmar hmm. mizoram hmm. bangladesh and also manipur manipur okay what would they be called if they were living in manipur cookies exactly very good very good understanding i can tell you when you come across something related to this in a newspaper you will have a much superior understanding they just cookies but they were simply being called mizos in mizoram okay it is a part of tribe becoming sub tribes clans and then diversifying it is like that so that is good you understood who are mizos okay what did they want at one time even uh, they want political autonomy autonomy yeah. but more seriously it's and uh, let me uh, tell you when they are seeking political autonomy pay attention whether it is within a nation or outside if it is outside it would be called secessionism okay secessionism okay tell me what were the secessionist movements uh, we covered so far 
I think uh, Nagas also demanded separation. Exactly, exactly. <clears throat> Nagas was secessionism. Nagas was secessionism. Okay. Uh, okay. So, were they asking within or outside? Tell me, what difference does it make to India? Uh, we have to give away the land. Uh, if they are outside or if they are inside, what difference would it make to India? Which is a very serious problem to handle. If they are inside, uh, uh, it's our territory. But if they are outside, okay. it's completely their, uh, okay. their own thing. Are there any provisions for secessionism as per Indian constitution? No, I guess. There is none. Okay, there is no provision to say that if people want to separate over this much period and with this percentage, they are free. I wish there should be something like that, but there is no such provision. Unity and integrity is a part of the preamble. If you ask me what is the most serious problem of Indian political system, I would say this, secessionism. Okay. Very innovative arrangements are made within India, but outside, it's very difficult. So, these are misos, and then they wanted to secede. That's true. Now tell me, which year they wanted? Uh, uh, peacefully, it ended in 1986, sir. Exactly. It started in... Around... Uh, for how many years it went on? 20, 20, Around 20 plus 20, years. 60s. 66 to 86. Okay. So uh, it went on like that. And uh, secessionism is, was one thing. And then there was one more thing that they were asking, which is similar to Naga demand. What is Gre that? Greater Mizoram. Exactly. Greater Mizoram, Mizoram and Separation. Okay. And then was it peaceful or it was not? It was not peaceful. peaceful. It was violent. It is called insurgency. Oh. Insurgency. Some people make distinction between insurgency and terrorism. Terrorism is to kill the innocent. Terror insurgency is to attack the military installations. Okay. Northeast is plagued by what they call insurgency. Okay, Manipur insurgency, Mizoram insurgency, Nagaland insurgency. So this is a case of insurgency. So, and then they attacked and finally what happened? How did India respond? Uh, IF bombing, aerial bombing. Bombing and then what was one draconian law? Afspa. Af 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 hmm? And finally, they were subjugated. They gave up hope. Okay. And then peace deal signed. What are the important things in that peace deal? What are the elements that you see? Uh, there was an economic package. Economic package, which is easiest. Mm. Uh, and the uh, official language also, they said that the official language. language. First of all, what is the most important thing they granted, which was not there before? What did they grant? University. Mm. Okay. Is it compensation to the Okay, compensation. Next. A trade, border trade. Okay, but what is the, I mean, uh, important thing? Did they make any difference to power structure? Uh, yes, sir. A more powerful. Uh... Hmm. The council was no more powerful. Council was made.
know what was the most important thing that they granted. They were asking for a nation. What were they given? So statehood, statehood. Union territory. Statehood. From union territory to statehood. Okay. Can you tell me uh, from the lowest to highest powers for a for a unit in Indian constitution? A small group of people want some autonomy. What can they be? What is the minimum thing that they can be given? From your understanding, a council of their own. Exactly, council of their own. That's true. What is that called? ADC, Autonomous District Council. Okay. Should autonomous district council be formed only under sixth or it can be formed outside? Uh, so, uh, outside fifth schedule also? No. Uh, but okay. fifth schedule, there is no provision for council. Okay, yeah, only sixth schedule. Only sixth schedule. So should a council be formed under sixth schedule or th there can be without sixth, sixth schedule? Without six schedule also. Exactly. Maybe Without six schedule also, council. councils can be formed. Manipur had it. Now, sir, Jammu Kashmir, Ladakh councils. Ah, okay, that is different. We'll come to that. Of the of the things we covered, uh, Manipur had it. Okay, so autonomous district council without six schedule is the minimum. And next, which is more powerful? Without six schedule or with six schedule? With six schedule. Yes, with six schedule. So ADC under sixth, next. And then after that, even much bigger. State. Union territory. Oh, okay. Union territory, then state. And after that? State. State. And after that? country. You can say state with certain special provisions. For example, Nagaland. Nagaland is not only a state, but it has a 371 provision. Okay. Nagaland is given the highest power. Of course, maybe less than Jammu and Kashmir previous compared to the previous times. So even after giving the statehood, something extra can be given in terms of special provisions. So that much can be granted within the framework of Indian constitution. But if you want a separate nation, you don't want to come under Indian army, Indian government, then the trouble begins. But the Mizo people realized, its leader realized, but it was a hopeless exercise. And so he went for an accord. And how did Lal Denga become chief minister very soon? Because of famines. Oh, no, chief minister very soon after the uh, accord. The government resigned, went for elections, and then he became the chief minister. Like that. And then what happened to the people who were fighting for the cause? That is one very important issue. If an armed group is fighting for some autonomy, what should be done to the armored group? They were compensated. Compensated, but before that? What do you mean by compensation? Armed group who are fighting. Some Mizo National Army was fighting. So what would one do to such a thing? Attack. Hmm? The state will attack them by bombing. The state will attack. Then how can there be an accord? Why will Lal Denga agree uh, when his own people are going to be attacked? Because he does not have any other choice either to surrender or like... You mean to say he was forced to surrender? Yes, sir, in a way. No. If he was forced to surrender, uh, you mean to say... Why will, they, why will the armed group agree? Then they will continue to fight. You mean to say, with the state. no, no. Did you read, uh, Nikhil? You didn't yes, read. Sir. Yes, 
the attack was in this case only, right? So the Indian state bombing the Mizo. No, what what was the terms of the accord? So when a militant group is fighting, when they reach an accord, what happens to the militant group? So they were give, they were shared power after the accord was signed. They were shared power. In, How can they... so many people share power? How about uh, I mean, how sharing power means how there will be so many chief ministers and ministers. Yes. Say five thousand five thousand the... armed group was fighting, and now the leader signs cons uh, consulting the armed group and other parties. So what happens to that armed group? So they were like in, in... They were recruited in the forces and exactly disarmed and recruited in regular forces. This is the normal procedure. Disarmed. That is how accord is. Surrendering of the weapons, disarming, and then they would be recruited in regular forces. And of course, top leaders would get power. So in Bodo Accord also, the people who are accused of very, very serious terrorist charges, and finally they have power, they're released. That is the nature of peace game. Okay. It is not one-sided victory. It is not crushing. Okay. Hmm? Does all accords follow the same trend? Uh, does? Does all forms of accord follow the same trend wherever the insurgency is? Do they always? There is a peace deal. This is the nature of the peace deal. Otherwise, how do you deal with, the, with an armed group? They have weapons. So there should be disarming, surrendering of weapons. And something should be done to the people who are participating in the armed group, armed, armed activities. So usually recruited, and those who do not want to be recruited are those who are not competent enough, given compensation. So basically by providing an alternative to the people who have been fighting, then an accord can be reached. And giving power, the leader became chief minister. Okay, so you have to do something to the people who have been fighting. Otherwise, there cannot be peace. And often, dropping of many cases against them. So, dropping cases, jobs, giving uh, employment in, in various areas, okay, political power. So, here Congress resigned, elections were held. And uh, MNF came to power and Lord Lenga became chief minister. So the group that was fighting should get something in return. If it was not getting anything in return, then it would be it would be crushing. Not there is not like a peace accord. So it was not crushed. But then they realized that we fought enough and uh, independent Mizoram would not be possible. So they realize that. But it does not mean they give up everything and then forget about it. No. Sir, from the beginning, state wanted to have a peace accord with no, no, Not in the beginning uh, stage. It, it took place of 20 years of, of insurgency. 86 plus. 86. And sir, currently, uh, there is no insurgent group as, no. as the name is. So it is like that. So I was wondering why the state can't do similar things for these Naxalite groups also. Like if that's here only used. We need to examine. We will examine Maoism also in one of these classes. Okay. But this is how Mizoram case is handled. So what will be your answer? Examine the critical factors responsible for tribal discontent. Responsible for tribal discontent in Mizoram? Hmm. 
what are the factors supraja what are the factors sir can you repeat the question sir critical factors responsible for tribal discontent in mizoram okay hmm. what was the first factor that triggered this discontent famine bamboo flowering okay and then culturally why did they feel uh, um, marginalized because uh, assamese nationalism uh, uh, okay so lack of power neglect discrimination sometimes lack of control over resources this contribute to discontentment and some people mobilize and it finally becomes ethno nationalism so cultural factors economic factors okay if it is not based on ethnicity but if it is based on a particular territory then it may be called regionalism regionalism development of regional consciousness okay we'll get back to that so critical factors responsible for tribal discontent so just on the basis of mizo uh, you can answer this question though you need not confine to mizo okay okay next uh sweta you are going to do bodo land okay hmm. now no. tell me hmm. do it no. in the similar way who are bodos what was the issue and the accord hmm. the uh, bodos are the tri uh, tribes uh, which are resided in the hill areas what bodos uh, remaining in hill areas are no. plains 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 okay plains okay what is the difference between plains and hill areas uh, hill areas have been given uh, more uh, protection uh, uh, because of uh, the region because of the region they were remote inaccessible so they were given protection they yes. were treated as proper tribes whereas plains tribes were not treated like that and can you tell me where exactly these bodos were in a, in uh, assam most of them the north north but near any river north of what brahmaputra okay you can see the map so bodo land is on the northern bank of brahmaputra okay as of now consisting of around four districts so plain stripes okay what is the problem that plain stripes face which hill tribes may not face Uh, resource erosion hmm. resource erosion is sweeping is more why is it so uh because non tribe uh, people uh, like reside of more over the uh, plain areas plain areas that is true okay so what was the main what was the economic problem as well as the cultural problem that they were facing what was the economic problem resource erosion resource erosion cultural problem Uh, Assamis were imposing Assam. their language. Okay, so do you see Assam wanted? I mean, Assamis wanted Assam for themselves. That is one ethnic nationalism. And within Assam, when Assamis is being imposed, others reacted. Okay, Mizo, Naga, and Bodo. Okay, so. can you tell me what is the most in from your understanding what is the most inconvenient fact for bodos in forming an autonomous state most inconvenient fact uh, 
I am not able to recall things. Okay, Deepika, can you? What is the most inconvenient fact to them? So they were not able to mark the territory. They, they were was... not able to mark the territory. Why were they not able to mark? They were spread over many spread regions. Over. Okay, but probably they are more in one region, so they can confine to that. The population was also low. Hmm. In, in don't you think uh, in, being only one area uh, in the you are claiming that this is your area, and then uh, two thirds are not uh, Bodos. Isn't it a serious problem? Yes. So demographic shift can cause very serious problems. In fact, the first thing that one should protect. if one wants to some one wants something on ethnicity basis is demographic change demography change nagas didn't have this demography change mizos didn't have this demography change okay they have some of course others have occupied but bodos even in the core areas they are not in majority so demographic shift can be a very serious assault on a society in fact the biggest thing that the 370 did before was the demographic shift i mean i'm talking about jammu and kashmir which we may discuss later if demography is changed so many things are changed and that's what happened to borders so resource erosion culture demography because of which they don't know about the jurisdiction okay now continue sweta how many accords were made so far the three accords three accords the last one being uh, 2020 2020 okay was there some kind of insurgency violence violence yes so in in uh, in the first accord it didn't work out and in the second uh, in 2003 uh, uh, they were uh, uh, they, they were agreeing uh, the bodos people agreed to the accord but later in 2010 uh, they rejected it yes some groups okay because they said powers are not enough and so there was violence against non bodos violence against non bodos so non bodos constitute a problem and bodos are there in other places of assam also that is another issue yes, so if an ethnic group is exactly located at one place and homogeneous concentrated then it will be there will be unity but one ethnic group not in majority at any place and spread across it becomes a problem okay so uh and tell me now we discussed mizo can you tell me differences and similarities between uh, mizo accord and uh, latest bodo accord so example, mizo was given a state but the bodos so they are not they, are, they have not been given state what were they given uh, they were uh, council council Mm. Uh, yeah so they can uh, uh, they can have their own um, sp and collector they can have their own affairs so uh, the collector no, this council and, coming under fifth uh, sixth or uh, not sixth so not in sixth schedule no this council comes in under sixth second accord also included sixth first accord did not have did not keep it under sixth but second sixth and third it is not only sixth plus additional powers you can say six plus third accord is six plus okay sir okay adc for example uh, ability to appoint a collector and sp yes sir disarming recruitment in uh, law and order mechanism okay and more areas to be included more powers so more area more powers disarming economic package and six schedule plus 
can they appoint anyone as dc and sp no they can't but the question is uh, instead of chief minister appointing they have the power to appoint not that anybody can now it is within the constitutional framework only but instead of chief minister choosing the head of uh, the council will choose it is like that so some kind of a mini state they created though it is not a state so this is a case of sixth schedule plus you can remember it like that it became sixth schedule in the second accord but now this is sixth schedule plus so do you see it is all about culture legislation resources who are ruling what are the powers and to what extent the state will control state will not control okay and what do you do with the people who don't belong to your ethnic group and what do you do with the armed group at the time of accord these are the issues i wanted you to see the general pattern and finally who knows this may settle the problem i mean it may okay but then after some time things may not work and then the problem may start once again but this is how indian constitution has been negotiating with ethno nationalism okay as long as ethno nationalism doesn't become stubbornly secessionist indian constitution is in a position to handle but when it becomes nation as a secessionist and uh, stubbornly and uh, there is sort to violence terrorism then it becomes a problematic issue Okay. Anything else, Sweta? So, and the religion, like mm -hmm. uh, they were transferring to the Hindu religion. Ah, exactly, exactly. They were getting, they were becoming caste. Caste, yes. Sir. Now that was stopped. They are asserting a, a, a tribal identity. This we discussed. Okay, a tribe doesn't want to be a caste now. what is the most important reason why a tribe may not want to be a caste because the division among the tribes or no. and a threat to their identity but why do they why they may not why they, they may just continue to be a caste like nk bose said they'll have an identity they'll have separate caste but something now seriously prevents a group to become a, a tribal group becoming a caste There because uh, some tri uh, tri uh, tribal members of the tribal groups uh, like try to get the upper caste okay and so, some are like they are not given the due but then some be, whoever is making into upper caste they can move to upper caste what prevents them now one very important issue reservations and protection exactly reservations a tribe does not want to be a caste in fact if a caste can get a tribal status it wants in fact meitis want tribe want to be want to get tribal status they are treated as caste they want tribal status st status so many groups in northeast india want st status So they don't want to lose their status. So the historical trend of tribe becoming caste was abruptly stopped because of reservation, and also maybe growing political awareness, growing identity, identity assertion. Identity assertion is not because of reservations, but that is how the nature of democracy is. People want to assert instead of saying we will be like you. they are likely to say yes we are what we are we deserve respect autonomy and freedom rather than emulation rather than seeking certificate from somebody else so it is uh, assert to ethnicity assertion cultural assertion they don't want to assimilate they don't want to be assimilated they want to assert so assertion is the norm now rather than assimilation they may be assimilated later that is different but people want to assert okay so at many places you can write answers
will use this. Sir, hmm, please. Uh, Bodo tribes they only speak one language. Uh, no, it is also an ethnic community. There are others. So, uh, it it is not a tribe. It is an ethnic community. It is an ethnic community. Different groups are there, but pure Bodo speakers also are there. It is like that. Bodo language is there, but but there are others also. Uh, 